In this video from the Application Express development team, we're going to be covering the, one of the big new features in Application Express 5.0, Page Designer. So let's get started. I'm in Apex 5.0 Application Builder, and this is Early Adopter 1. You can sign up for this Early Adopter by going to apexea.oracle.com. The main reason we put up the Early Adopters is so that you can get a feel for the new functionality, but just as importantly that you can give us feedback on any issues that you find and also help us to make decisions on things where we've got multiple selections. So when we get into the actual page design, you'll find that, for example, we have two ways of editing text in the text editor and in a pop-up dialogue. And we also have two ways of displaying help. And we're after your recommendations on which way you prefer to see those. Also make sure that you look at the known issues. Within the page designer, there's certain features which won't be there in production. There's certain capabilities which don't currently work. So it's very important that you provide the feedback and also understand what is available and what is not. Within the application builder, I have the sample database application. So now I'm just going to go and click on page one. Immediately, you'll notice that the page designer is very different from the component view and the tree view. This brand new IDE is designed to make developers much more productive maintaining pages. Let's go through some of these parts now. Up the top here, we have the toolbar. Many of these options are the same as they are in the tree view and the component view. However, there are some that are very specific to the page designer. And there's actually a separate video that will go through each of these major parts. So if you want to know more about those, I suggest you watching those videos. Over to the left pane here, we have an accordion. And the accordion has rendering, dynamic actions, processing, shared components. This is very similar to what you're used to seeing on the tree view with the three different panes across the page. However, the different accordions. The one distinction is dynamic actions, which has been removed from rendering because of the importance of dynamic actions. The capabilities within the tree are the same as they were with some additions. For example, you can now duplicate or delete directly from the right-click menu. You can also copy to another page. Being able to right click on an item and delete it immediately rather than having to drill into that record and hit the delete button should prove much more productive. You can still drag and drop components up and down through the tree. In the center pane, we have the grid layout and the text editor at the top, and then we have various tabs down here at the bottom. The grid layout shows you a visual representation of what's currently on the page. So you can see global regions. You can also see the regions defined on the page, the buttons, items, etc. The text editor is utilized to be able to edit text areas such as for SQL source or validation logic or conditional logic. Down the bottom here, we have a gallery. And in here, we have regions, items, and buttons. And you can simply drag and drop any of these components directly up into the grid layout. The messages section is utilized when you're actually adding in new components or modifying an existing component. If there's any errors or warnings, then they will come up on the messages tab. Page search, pretty self-explanatory. And help will actually show you help for the specific element. So now let's go and have a look at the property editor over here in the right-hand pane. It shows all the attributes for the currently selected components. So at the moment, it's showing me the details for the page. I can also click on a region. Firstly, the, you'll notice that the grid layout is synchronizing and showing you the search region now. And that the property editor has also changed to reflect the attributes for the region. I can use this edit in a modal window here to edit the PL SQL code. And you can see that code in here. I can actually even validate it. Or alternatively, you can use a text editor in this middle pane here. Again, we can do validation in here. I'm just going to close that. And I want to go back to my grid layout. And I can also use the grid layout to select the current component. So you'll notice that the rendering accordion there is updated to show the search. And all my attributes here are now for the search item. Now I'm going to update this type from text field to a select list. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that within the grid layout, the item is now red because there's an error. And if you have a look in messages, you'll see that this error is because of the fact it now requires a list of values because I changed the type to select list. So I'm simply going to select static values. And when I do that, you'll see that it's actually populated the def a default there for me, which I can easily change. You can also go and have a look at the help, which shows attribute specific help, in this case for the static values. Down the bottom here, there's another way of actually showing the help. And this is again 
one of the areas where we're after recommendations from EA1 participants to tell us which one of these two you prefer. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of that again. Up the top here, you'll notice that there's this undo capability. Unlike with component and tree view, where you make a change to a particular attributes and then you save that and then move to the next item or to a region, etc. Within page design, you can make multiple changes across multiple components and none of them are saved until such time as you hit the save button. This allows you to do undo. So if I undo the last change, you'll see that again, my type needs to be specified or redo. Another feature that's been built in is because you can do multiple changes and not save them, that if you try and navigate off this page, for example, I'm going to click SQL Workshop, then it'll come up with a pop-up telling me that I'm going to leave and that there's unsaved changes. Obviously, I want to stay on this page. I'm just going to change this focus to be on the sample database application. I'm actually going to go ahead and save and it'll tell me that it saved the changes for me, which is great, and now run this page. Now, when you run, it actually pops up in either a new window or in a new tab, depending on your browser. I've already logged into this previously, so I'm on my home page. You can see that I've got my new select list. Now, that isn't really what I want, so I'm going to utilize the quick edit here. And as I scroll over different regions and items, then it allows me to go and select one of those. It'll go straight back into the page editor and show me that particular component, where when I left, I was actually on the page. Now it's showing me the item. So I can go back up here, change this to back to a text item, save it, run it. And again, this time I'm just going to do a quick edit. There's something I don't like about this particular region. You'll notice that the focus is now on that region. I may want to go and add something in or whatever. This concludes the overview of the new Apex 5.0 page designer. Don't forget to go to apexea.oracle.com to sign up for Early Adopter 1 so that you too can start playing with the page designer. And we greatly look forward to getting your feedback. Thank you very much.